Proverbs 26, verse 3. The Bible says this, A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. I like that verse. Amen, I really like that verse. I like the next one too. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Then what's the next verse say? Listen, well, let me stop you there for a second. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. What does that mean? Here's what it means. If I give that fool an answer, and then he doesn't receive my answer, and he just keeps, he, he keeps it going back and forth, if I keep going with him, I'm going to start looking like him. Do you understand? That's what God's trying to tell you. Answer not a fool according to his thought. After you've given that man an answer, and he's not accepted your scriptural, biblical, straightforward answer, and he's, and he's, he's chiding you, or he's, he's reproaching you, or he's reviling you back and forth, stop answering him. You look like him. Make sense? You're starting to look like him. He's got you sucked in right where he wants you. And he wants you to keep answering him. No, don't answer him. He doesn't deserve an answer anymore. That's what God is telling you. Answer not a fool according to his folly. Lest thou also be like unto him. But there are times, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Hey, there's a time to answer a fool. And by the way, that's where that, just because you speak with grace, season with salt, doesn't mean Jesus spoke with grace, season with salt, unless you want to accuse him that he didn't. And he said some pretty stern things to people. And he was God. Amen? And what did he do? He said some stern things to people before. He had to, he had to rebuke them. Sometimes he had to reproach them even. He had to throw some pretty tough stuff at them, didn't he? But you know what? Wisdom will tell you, guided by the Holy Ghost, when it's time for me to be done with that person, when I'm done talking to them, because I'm, I'm starting to act like them. Amen. So I should stop. However, you better answer, according to, lest he be wise as his own. Don't, hey, if you give him an answer, and he just keeps railing, he wants to rail at you and keep going, stop talking to him. Don't give him any more answers. Just keep preaching or doing whatever you're doing, but, but don't give him any more answers. Just let him go. You already gave him the warning. He can't be wise in his own conceit. You've already told him. Let it go. Because otherwise he's dragging you in. And that's anywhere in life, by the way. That's just not on the street. That's a principle of life we should live. Face the social media world, the same thing. Same thing. You give an answer. They don't want to accept your answer. Have a good day. I'm done. Why? Because I'm not going to, you're not going to make me up. I'm not going to turn into a fool trying to answer you. I'm going to be done with you. Amen. Sometimes you have to give the fool the rod of correction. The word of God. Amen. What does it say? The rod for the fool's back, right? Give them the rod sometimes and then let it go. They've had their answer. They've, they've received it. But you and I, everything that we do ought to be done with the grace of God and the dignity of the office of, a, of, a, of an ambassador. Paul said in 1 Timothy 4.10, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. We labor and suffer reproach. 1 Peter 4.12, and, and we're finished here. I'm just reading these verses. Turn there, please, because I want you to read these with me here. Just look over these as I'm reading them. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. It's talking about suffering, Christ's sufferings, partakers of Christ's sufferings. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But, important word there, let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, as an evildoer, as, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, listen, let him not be ashamed, let him glorify God on this behalf. 
For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin in us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God, listen, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. That's it, friend, right there. You're going to suffer as a minister of reconciliation. Commit, commit it unto God and suffer the reproach. Suffer it as Christ suffered it, as the Apostle Paul taught to suffer it. Follow them for examples. Because as a minister of reconciliation, you're going to suffer. But you need to suffer properly. You can suffer in a wrong way and bring reproach on the cause of Christ. But if I suffer Christ's way, then I bring him honor and glory. And that's what we want to do, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's about honoring and glorifying Him, not ourselves. Amen? Right. Not ourselves. Father, Lord, thank You for Your words. Thank You for the truth of them. Help us to live them, Lord. It's a challenge every day, Lord, that we face. Help us to suffer reproach as a minister of reconciliation, as an ambassador of Christ. As we bear your reproach outside of the camp, Lord, thank you for each and every man here, Lord, that has a desire to go out and serve you and, and preach, Lord. And, and they've, bear, they've taken a lot of reproach. They've suffered a lot of reproach, Lord. Nothing like our forefathers did that were murdered or beaten or anything, but, Lord, they've suffered reproach. And I thank you for these men and their, their willingness to sacrifice in that way, Lord. And I pray that, that we would grow more and more this coming year. Help us all to grow get together in the faith, Lord. And uh, help me to be better in these areas too as well, Lord. And strengthen me, I pray in Jesus' name. I mean, the truth is, we all say stuff. You, you're going to get talked about if you live right. You're going to get talked about if you live wrong. If you go out and sin, they're going to talk about you. If you serve God, they're going to talk about you. If you sit down, they're going to talk about you. If you jump up and shout, they're going to talk about you. They're going to talk about you. People are going to say something. People are going to run that mouth. If, if you got something, they're going to be jealous and talk about you. If you're poor, you're sorry, make no camp. And if you're rich, you're, you're vain. And, and if, you, if you work hard, all you think about is money. If you don't, you're lazy. And if, if, you, if you try to serve God, they say you're a hypocrite. If you don't, they say, say something. They're going to say something no matter what you do. Listen, they talked about me before I got saved. Up there around Mary and oh, there's that Danny Catholic. La, 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 la. They talked about me. I mean, there's, I mean, some of them ladies, Lord have mercy. I mean, they talk 140 words a minute with gust about to 180. I don't tell you something, brother. Listen, they talk about you when you're right. They talk about you when you're wrong. They've talked about me ever since I started. But I'm not going to let that keep me from getting saved about people criticizing me. They talked about Jesus. They said he was mad. You know what that means? Crazy. They said the Lord Jesus Christ was mad. They said he was born of fornication. That he was an illegitimate child. They said he, he taught lies. They said he was all kinds of, they said everything bad about him and so you are scared to death. I'm amazed at how terrified some people are. Well, if I do this, the, the women at work, the men at work, they might say, they, oh, Lord have mercy, you thin-skinned brat. Get over it. They said, the Lord, they talk about him. They look, look what they've done to John Wesley. Look what they've done to Spurgeon. Look what they did to Dale Moody. Look what they did to all the martyrs. Of course they're going to talk about you. People always talk. Let them talk.